In this video, I will give you a brief overview of another basic data type in Python, and it's called tuple. A tuple is an immutable sequence of elements. It's defined within parentheses, and each element is separated by a comma. Elements of a tuple can be of any data type. Uh, let's start by seeing how to define a tuple. So we start with the variable, as is always, user data. Okay. And then we open parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we specify the elements that we want. So let's see Fabio, my last name, and then uh, the job, and then uh, city, and then uh, the nationality. Okay, um, let's print them. User data, and let's run this code. And boom, we got these uh, tuple elements. So as you see them inside uh, the editor, you will see them in the same way inside the terminal. So that's the output that you will get. So each of the elements separated by a comma, these are all strings. But if we want, let's say we want to add here uh, 40, and then let's print it again. And you will see that only strings elements are surrounded by a quote, but this is an integer, so um, there are no quotes around it. Uh, if we want, we can say, let's say at the end, uh, true, um, and then we print it again. You will see now that the, the Boolean value has quotes around it because only um, strings has quotes. So um, that's how you uh, define it. But we can, uh, as I said, this is an immutable sequence of elements, uh, which means that we know exactly at which, what there is uh, at its position of the tuple. So we can safely um, assign each of the element, each of the elements uh, to a variable. Uh, using this approach. So let's see here, create, and then here, assign variable. So we could do like name, we define a set of variables, and then we um, assign these variables to the content of the tuple in this way. So uh, we create a name variable, then last name, then uh, age, we got age, we got job, we got city, and we got nationality, and we got, I don't know, true stands for status for maybe, status, so, and then we assign the content of the user data to plug. so, this works and each of these elements is now stored inside each of these variables. That's one way to access a user, uh, to access the elements of a tuple. Uh, and we can also use another syntax, which is the same that we've been, we have been using so far for dictionaries and lists and even for strings. Uh, so, specify the index of the element inside the square brackets. So, let's see how it works. So, let's say we want to print the name, which is in position 0, so it's index 0, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so far. Um, and let's say we want also to print the same value using the other syntax, so user data and then square brackets and zero because it's the first element so we should get both times as a result fabio now let's print our code and that's true uh, so we got fabio which is uh, this line of code and we go again fabio which is this line of code if we want to grab the last element we could say minus one and we got through in the same way we do that in 
with the other basic data types that we studied so far. So and that's two of the ways that you can, uh, two of the approaches that you can use to access elements inside of Tublem. Uh, so you can also use the slice method, same way you use it uh, for strings and lists. Uh, so let's try um, to use it to get a portion of the duplet. So um, let's see user data. So let's see slice first. Uh, user data. And then uh, let's see two. And again user data. And let's do the opposite. And let's grab a portion in the middle. So let's see from the element one, so last name, till the element so zero, one, two, three, four, maybe. So element four, and let's of course print them. Let's wrap them inside the print function. Print and print again. Okay, now when we run the code, you will get three different tuples, each one that has a portion of the original tuple. So the first tuple has elements from age, where is from age, so 0, 1, 2, from the position 2 till the end. The other one has all the elements before uh, the element in position 2, so uh, the first and second. And the last element as a portion, so from element, what we did say from element 1, so 0 and 1, that's the first element that we grab, till the element number 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, excluding the number 4, so we, we grab these three elements. And as you see, we got these three elements inside of this new tuple. Uh, let's see, of course, you want to add the elements to a tuple, and I'm afraid, as I say, tuples are immutable sequence of elements, meaning that once we define them, we cannot change its elements. Uh, so, I mean, we can change the original one, as I did so far, but once we define it, we cannot access each element and... Um, change its content, for instance, uh, but we can uh, extend it. So we can use the add special method to extend the tuple with another one. This method um, accepts one parameter, uh, which is another tuple, and return uh, a new tuple that contains uh, both tuples that we passed. So let's define a new variable. So let's say extend, maybe add. So let's see how to, um, we define a new variable, new data, and then the user data plus add, and then between parentheses, let's define to be here, um, new, new user data, and create a new tuple and say, I don't know, um, what else we can say, um, website maybe, and um, I don't know, let's, let's just add this, um, uh, years of coding, uh, and yeah, that's it. Let's pass this new tuple inside the add method, and let's see what we got when we print the new data variable. So we got this new tuple, which contains the original tuple, so until true, and the new tuple that we passed, so with these two new elements, the website and the years of experience, let's say that. Um, so that way we can create a new uh, tuple uh, using the add method. Let's try now to update elements. 
So, and this, as I said, um, is an immutable sequence of elements. So, if we grab the user data and we try to grab the element at index 2, which should be the 0, 1 to the age, in this case is the age, and let's say we want to change the age, 41, so, and then print the user data. We will get a type error because the tuple object does not support items assignment, which means that we're going to change its content because we already defined it. So we might need to create a new tuple um, with this new value if we want to replace its content. Uh, so if we want to replace the content, we can either create a new tuple or replace in its entire content. So let's see what we could do. Um, so we could say, let's comment this out because that will return an error and we won't be able to um, hit the rest of the code. So let's say we go user data and we want just it to be my name, uh, my last name, and my job title. So, okay. This way now, the new, the user data, we print it, it changed, of course. Okay, you need the new tuple now. Um, this variable contains a new tuple. We replace entirely its content and uh, we print the variable. Uh, so we have been able to change its content, but only because we created a new tuple entirely. So we replace the entire content. So we could say that replace. Um, Another way you could do that is to use the slice method and the add method to uh, join mm, a portion of the original tuple to another part. So if we comment this out and we say new user data, we, do we have again the new user data? Yes. So let's call it new user data two. Uh, so if we grab the user data from position zero to position four, uh, and then we use the add method, and we pass uh, inside it, let's say we pass the new user data here. That's a that's a variable that has this content inside it, so this tuple. So we will get the user data um, that should be this one, including true. Uh, so from element zero to the element four, so zero one two three, uh, zero one two three four. Um, excluding four, and the new data. So let's print this code and see what we got. New user data two, let's print it. And as you see, we got new tuple. So we, ex we replaced its content and we actually created a different variable uh, with different content inside it. So uh, grabbing the first a few elements of the tuple, the original tuple that we wanted, and placing them inside the new variable, uh, extending the original tuple with another tuple that is stored inside this variable, which is this one, and then we printed that. Um, another thing that we can do is the indexing. So we can use the index method to find the position of an element in the tuple. This method accepts the element as a parameter. 
let's try it out using the new um, user data so index let's say index uh, so user new user data to uh, index and let's say we want the index of the element minus two uh, which should be the website actually https uh, slash slash okay the name of my website and let's see what we got when we do that let's print it so now we should get a number as a result which represents not in the tuple uh, https okay you will get a value error if the value that you, you want to grab is not in the tuple otherwise you will get the number so an integer that represents the position of the element zero one two three four battery low okay so element in position four and you got the number four as a result. Uh, let's move to another um, thing that we can do. So we can count. So the count method instead returns how many times a given element is present inside the tuple. Uh, returns zero if the element is not in the tuple. So let's let's try that now. So user data and then count and in the parentheses we specify the element that we want to grab uh, so the value of the element so let's say we want to grab fabio and we need to wrap this inside a print function to see a result so let's print it out and when we run the code you will see that you got another number so number one one stands for true in this case one or zero uh, one is true zero is false uh, so one means true which he, which means the element is inside the tuple but if the element wasn't inside the tuple what we got is user data let's try maybe it's not as i said let me let me double check if we type these two times and we run the code again, we should get two. Too many values to unpack. Yes, of course we do. Um, okay, we unpack that. Let's grab this user data and let's copy it here and let's create a duplicate of the first element. And let's see what we got. Should get two. Yes, yeah, sorry, my bad. Um, it doesn't mean uh, true or false. It means that the element is in the tuple two times. If we got that element three times, we will get three and not still one. But if the element is not in the tuple, so let's say we remove a letter from the element, we will get zero. So, of course, that will count the method count, will count how many times one element is inside the tuple. Uh, and return the number uh, of times that it finds this element inside the tuple. Uh, let's move to the move part of tuples. So we can, of course, remove all, ele all elements of the tuple by assigning um, to the variable that stores the tuple uh, an empty tuple, like we did with dictionaries. Uh, so, but we could remove uh, one element from the tuple uh, by creating a new tuple and exclude the element that we want to remove. Let's say that we got, um, let's create a new variable, user log, and let's say fab to, oops. On the oops. 
and then name and then last name okay so we got this new tuple uh, let's create a new variable a new log and let's assign to the to it um, so all the elements from 0 to 2 so user log Within square brackets, so we use the slice method zero to two, and let's create, let's add to it uh, all the elements from the user log from position three till the end. Okay, so zero one, we grab this two, and zero one two, and this one. Uh, let's now print the new log. New log printed. Okay. And you see here we have excluded this element which is 0, 1, 2 from in position 2. So we grab first all the elements from position 0 to position 2, 0 and 1, excluding the position 2. And then we grab all elements from position 3 till the end. So including the element in position 3, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And so also position four. And we will get a new tuple that stores uh, the element from the, the first tuple, uh, excluding the element that we wanted. So we want to exclude Monday, and we did. Uh, that's pretty much it for uh, tuples. You can read more visiting the official documentation and practicing a bit with this concept that we just covered. In the next video, we will study conditionals. I'll meet you there.